There are several thousand collisions involving trains each year, which result in over 1,000 injuries and several hundred deaths. A majority of these deaths occur when someone is struck by a train while trespassing on railroad property. Remember, railroad property is private property. Trespassing along railroad property is not only against the law, it's very dangerous. Avoid taking shortcuts. The only safe place to cross railroad tracks is at a designated crossing. Don't get caught dead on the tracks. Stay off, stay away, stay alive. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. This is Elmhurst, our kind of town. Tonight, we come to you from Langhorst Field on the campus of Elmhurst College. It's Blue Jay football. Tonight, it's the home opener for the one and one Blue Jays as they take on the 2-0 Maroons from the University of Chicago. And we welcome you into our broadcast alongside my partner, Luke Tanaka. My name is Mark Kruger. We're so glad to have you with us here tonight. This is the final non-conference game of the season for the Blue Jays as they get geared up towards the tough, tough CCIW contest. And Luke, this should be a good test for them here tonight. Indeed, it's going to be an extremely physical game. So if you love old school, old style football, you're going to love this game. It's going to be rough and tumble in the trenches. Whoever wins the line of scrimmage is certainly going to win it. A great test for the Blue Jays before they get into the CCIW schedule. Tough loss for the Blue Jays to start the season. They lost to Loris College, but bounced back nicely last week against Olivet College, especially junior running back Mr. Williams. What a game he had. What a game. 306 yards on 39 carries. Just unbelievable in his uh, performance against Olivet. And it, really, they just kept going to the run because they couldn't, they couldn't stop it. And the Blue Jays ended up coming out victorious, coming back after being down 20 to nothing early in the game. All right, we'll take a timeout. When we come back, we'll have the starting lineups and the opening kickoff. Elmhurst College and the University of Chicago. This is Elmhurst, our kind of town. And welcome back to Langhorst Field here in Elmhurst, Illinois. It's the home opener for the Elmhurst College Blue Jays as the, they host the Maroons from the University of Chicago. Mark Kruger along with Luke Tanaka as we get set for Blue Jay football. Just a gorgeous night here this final weekend of summer. Elmhurst won the toss. They have elected to defer. So the Maroons will get the ball first to start the game. And uh, Luke again, boy ideal weather conditions here tonight. Just beautiful. The, the rain came early and, and the rain left us and now it's just sunny. It's gorgeous. The sun coming in from our left here and I just believe that it's going to be a really great day for football. It's going to be a great game. It's going to be a battle of two very physical teams. Both teams love to run the football. So we'll see who can control the line of scrimmage. I think it's going to be really important in this contest. So the Maroons will get the ball first. They'll be moving left to right. Brett Bayer will tee it up. 5'10", junior out of Crown Point, Indiana. will get things underway here. Next week, the Blue Jays will have a bye, and then they'll open up CCIW action two weeks from now against the tough Augustana Vikings. And we are underway here at Langhorst Field. Vince Beltrano returns. He's got boom, 30, 40 yard line straight ahead. And the kicker for the Blue Jays, Bayer, right around midfield with the tackle. Nice return that time by Vincent Beltrano. Beltrano averages almost 34 yards per return through the first two games. And definitely not a surprise to see him Break a long one all the way to midfield. Chicago starting with wonderful field position to begin this game. So up comes this Maroon offense led by the quarterback, senior Patrick Ryan. 5'11", 207-pounder out of Fort Wayne, Indiana. Under center here as the Maroons line up in the eye. And the give, this is Zach Ross Nash. He's the leading rusher for the Maroons, a 5'11 senior out of Allendale, New Jersey, as he picked up a, about three yards on the play to the 47. 
Nash, 31 rushes on the season, 129 yards, 4.1 yards to carry. So definitely a very effective rusher for this Maroons offense and one that loves to run the football. It'll bring up second down and seven. And coming in motion and getting the ball, that is number 18, and he is going to get close to the 40-yard line. It is inside the, well, actually, they're going to spot it right at the 41, so he's going to be about a yard short here. It's going to be third and about a yard to go here. Sid Reynolds with the carry for the Maroons. Up front defensively for the Blue Jays, Nick Spracklin, Jimmy Abbott, and Chris Reed on the defensive line. Third and a yard, it is Ross Nash, the ball carrier, and I don't think he's got it. Whoa, coming up was the corner, Marvin Carr, to make the tackle. And I think Brian Tucker came in at the end there, number 49, replacing a number 49 last year, the leading tackler for the Blue Jays, Wills Massey, making a nice play on the football there to swarm and follow up the good hit by Carr. Brian Tucker, John Eliadis, and Jake Garabedian, the linebackers, the corners, Carr and Krieger, Viero, Valdez Honorable, and Trent Howard, the safeties. Fourth and a yard, and the Maroons are going to go for it here. Ball at the 41. Long count, Ryan trying to, yeah, they're trying to entice the Blue Jay defense, but they weren't falling for it. Great discipline there by the Blue Jay defense. Chicago, Chicago will have to burn a timeout, but definitely not a bad idea to try to get the Blue Jays offsides there, possibly get an, an easy free first down. Timeout taken by the Maroons. We should mention that this is, well, first year coach Ron Plans, his first year, the 19th head football coach here at, at Elmhurst College. He spent the last five seasons as an assistant coach at Minnesota State University in Mankato which is a very good NCAA Division II school. That's right, Mark, and Plans comes in first year, the third head coach for the Blue Jays in as many years after both Tim Lester and Joe Adam, the two previous head coaches, have left uh, to take positions at Syracuse and yeah, assistant boy. positions. And obviously a very good program at Syracuse and one that was headed by Scott Schaefer, who Adam and Lester both have connections with out there. But Plans excited for this his first home opener as a head coach. So now, after that timeout, the Maroons bring in their punting unit. It's Ben Cheney, number 84, and he will punt it away. He's looking for the corner, and, well, it's going to go out of bounds. We'll see where the officials spot it. Blue Jays looking to get a pretty good spot. Looks like at the 27-yard line, 28-yard line, 13-yard punt, and so the Blue Jays will take over. Joe Camilleri will come out. I was a little surprised with the angled kick there because the Blue Jays did not have anybody back deep. I suppose if they can't stop the kick, then it's a good to angle it, but potentially could have just stopped it around the 10-yard line and ran down and got it. There were no Blue Jays there to receive it. Well, they bring it back to the 20-yard line, so it's going to be first and 10 Blue Jays from their own 20. No score early going here in the first quarter. Joe Camilleri. Working out of the pistol, Garrett Claxon going in motion. And the give is to Josh Williams off of left tackle. And uh, we'll set the offensive line for you for the Blue Jays. C.J. Barnes and Logan Mosier. The tackles, the two guards, Connors and Danny McHale in the center is Drake Hoffman. And here's another look at it here. Josh Williams, the ball carrier. Picks up three yards on the play, down to the 23. So it'll bring up second down and seven now for Camilleri and the Blue Jays. Camilleri faking it to Williams. He's going to bootleg it out to the far side. He's got his man. That's Kalen Miller. Kalen Miller, a transfer over. He's one of the leading receivers for the Blue Jays, and they pick up a first down. Kalen Miller is one of the players, when I talked to head coach Ron Plans yesterday, that he was raving about Kalen Miller, really impressed by his ability and really exceeded expectations. Coming in as a transfer, not sure what they're going to give him, but Joe Camilleri also talked to him, and he said you know, they have had a couple of nice passing plays they just couldn't connect on, so they're hoping to hit those to open up some running lanes for Josh Williams. 
on the ground. Seventh catch of the season for Miller. Camilleri now first and 10 from the own 40, and it is Williams, the ball carrier. He'll get to the 44-yard line. He'll pick up four. Jackson Gary, the sophomore outside linebacker, was there to make the tackle. Defensive line for the Maroons, Ryan Oros and Brandon Bullock, the two ends. Inside, Eddie Giannina, Scott Mainquist. Linebackers, Jackson Gary, Nick Pilak. Skyler Montefalco, two corners, Vince Beltrano, Chris Dengler, and the safeties, Greg Tome and Jacob Romeo. Second down and six yards to go here for the Blue Jays from their own 44. Elmer's opening drive, and it's a keeper, Camilleri, and he'll get tackled at the 48, pick up four, so it's going to bring up third down and a couple. Camilleri seemed to bobble that ball for a second, perhaps making a, a last-second decision to take it out of the belly of Josh Williams. Smart play, though, as Williams would have been bottled up from the far side, and Camilleri was able to get a couple of yards to get a nice third and manageable for the Blue Jays. Need to get right to midfield to pick up the first down. Miller in the slot to the top of your screen. Camilleri, he's got his man here, that's Garrett Claxon. And Claxon will have a first down as he gets knocked out of bounds at the 39 yard line. First and 10, beautifully executed that time by Joe Camilleri. Looked like a run pass option there. They had the option to hand it off to Williams towards the far side, but instead Camilleri pulls it out. They slip out the tight end, Claxon, towards the near side, and easy pitch and catch for an 18-yard pickup and a first down. And look, it's those type of plays that can open things up for Josh Williams. See what the, the Blue Jays call here now. First and 10 from the 34-yard line of the Maroons. Camilleri. Will keep it, and they'll pass once again. It's Garrett Claxon, and Claxon with another nice run after the catch as he was shoved out of bounds at the 25-yard line, a pickup of nine. Just the way that you were talking about how that play is going to open up for Josh Williams. Josh Williams is going to open up that kind of play because these Maroons know 306 yards as we watch the catch by Claxon on a very similar play from the play they just ran for the first down. But well, that'll, that'll, Josh Williams will open up plays like that because everybody knows he rushed for 306 yards last week, and that the Bruins definitely don't want that to happen for that to be the thing that beats him tonight. Claxon and Josh Williams, both uh, leading receivers uh, with 10 heading into this game. Second down and a yard for Camilleri and the Blue Jays. Play action, Camilleri looking, and it was... Well underthrown, it's just simply going to be an incomplete pass. Claxon was the intended receiver, but well underthrown that time. They sent, the Chicago sent a couple of players there on a blitz from both sides on the outside, left and right, and made Camilleri throw a little off his back foot. He had one-on-one -on -one coverage with Claxon, but just couldn't quite get enough on the throw to get it where he needed to for the El Blue Jay tight end. Jackson Gary was applying the pressure, number four. So third down now, yard to go for Elmhurst. Ball right at the 25-yard line. Camilleri's going to keep it as they faked it to Williams. He will have the first down as he gets brought down at the 20-yard line. Tackled on the play by Greg Tome, the junior free safety. Let's take another look at it here. And uh, pretty good decision by the quarterback, Luke. And Camilleri, that's really going to be a huge part of their offense again because Josh Williams is going to get so much so much attention by the defense. If Camilleri can do that enough times to make to keep the defense honest, it'll again open up more holes for Josh, and not only that, but also open up the passing game. So Skyler Montefalco, the senior outside linebacker, number 34, coming in at the end of that play to help with the tackle. 8.19 to go here in the first quarter. First and 10. It's Williams looking for the left corner. He's got a block, and he's in. Touchdown. Oh, no, that is not. They're calling him inside the one. Oh, my. Looked like he was headed for a touchdown, but they're going to spot it right at the one. Let's see if we can take another look at it here. 
Just a great play by Williams here to cut back, and I believe it might have been by design. Yeah, a little misdirection a little, right. play. You bet. Here, let's see if he gets to the pylon. Oh, my. That, that's a touchdown. That's wow. That second to last step looked extremely close. <laughs> that's, hey. that's great camera work by our crew, though. They didn't, they didn't give it to him on that one, but no. maybe they'll give it back to him right here to see if he can punch it in. First and goal, just inside the one-yard line. Camilleri will keep it himself. Still no indication yet. Boy, the Maroons say the ball may have gotten loose, but looks like the officials are just marking it down here. No indication of a of a touchdown. Yeah, they're marking it at about the one foot yard line. Camilleri tried to bounce that one outside, but I wonder if they blew the whistle maybe a little too soon. He well, it's going to bring up second down in inches. You know what's coming. It's either Camilleri or Williams. It's Williams, oh my, and he gets brought back down. It's big, number 73, Scott Manquist, the senior out of San Diego, California, was there. And Manquist is one of those players that Coach Ron Plants was really looking at, and he looked absolutely dominant on film. You saw it right there on that replay. Uh, as you can see there, what a great play to get penetration through the offensive line by Manquist. And this defensive line from Chicago, they are extremely effective in stopping the run. So we'll see what the Blue Jays do here. Now third down from the four-yard line. Mm. Joe Camilleri looking things over. Adam Bowers to the left of her screen. Going in motion is Miller. Looking for Bowers. It is well overthrown. And now it's fourth down and the field goal unit coming in. And Boy, what a defensive stop by the Maroons. Definitely, and then obviously that close call on that run by Josh Williams, and now the Maroons get a strong defensive stand and possibly some momentum with that kind of, with that kind of stop. It was Eddie Giannana putting some pressure on Camilleri, which made him throw it possibly a little sooner than he wanted to. So this will be a 21-yard field goal attempt for Brett Bayer. It's, it's basically just like an extra point as far as the distance goes, but it is good. So the Blue Jays are on the board first. 21-yard field goal by Brett Bayer with 6.05 remaining here in the opening quarter. So uh, they didn't get seven, but they at least got some points. That's right. It was a really great drive, I believe. A couple of really huge third down conversions, one on the Camilleri run and then one on the pass to Claxon. Just a couple of really important plays for the Blue Jays to get out to a good start. It's, it's been a struggle for them to get out to a good start the last few games on the road. So to get out a start here, good start here at home is always extremely important for this Elmhurst team and really any team. Chris Wilkerson, the head coach for the University of Chicago, will set our officials for you. The referee tonight is Mike Cunningham, the umpire Jeremy Mansilla. The headlinesman is Jeff Curran, line judge Ed Pavanka, side judge John Burke, field judge Ivan Palamore, and the back judge is Glenn Jackson. Mark Kruger along with Luke Tanaka and our entire crew. We thank you for tuning in. Blue Jay football, this is their home opener here from Langhorst Field. Blue Jays come in with a 1-1 one one record. University of Chicago 2-0. and oh. Let's see if they try to kick it away from Beltrano this time. Beltrano with the long return last time all the way to midfield to give Chicago good field position to start the game. The other deep man is number 10 Chandler Carroll. Yeah, Beltrano, the dangerous deep man, and, well, he will take it right from the one-yard line. Beltrano to the 20 and tackled at the 25-yard line by Valdez Honorable. And so the University of Chicago will come out its second possession of the night. Here's another look at the 21-yard field goal right through the middle. And Elmhurst is on the board first. Three to nothing, exactly. Six minutes remaining here. We're in the opening quarter. 
Britt Berry now three for three on the season for field goals. Hit one from 24 against Loris, hit one from 39 against Olivet. Boy, if you have a good kicker, that is such an underrated part of this game. They can win so many games for you. Ryan going deep, and it's incomplete. Nathan Massey, it looked like it was in his bread basket, and he just dropped it. And Massey's been their true hands guy. He's the tight end, their leading receiver. Not only is he the leading receiver, but he has five more catches than any other player on the Chicago team. He has eight receptions for 95 yards on the season. As we check out the replay, it was a really good throw by Patrick Ryan that Massey just couldn't quite hold on to. He was amongst a slew of Blue Jays down the field. Nathan has a couple of touchdowns as well. So after the incomplete pass, it's second down, 10 now for the Maroons. Couple guys coming over here to the near side, and yeah, there's confusion on that offensive unit, and the Maroons take a timeout here. 5.55 remaining here in the opening quarter. Three to nothing in case you've just tuned in. Blue Jays with a 21 yard field goal, and they lead it here by a score of three to nothing. Brett Bayer with the 21 yard field goal for Elmhurst. I wanted to ask you, Luke, we, we talk about the first year coach. Uh, how difficult is it for the players to, to have a new head coach in? And I'm sure you got to learn a whole new system, a whole new uh, a scheme of things, and it's got to be awful tough. He, he brings in his own assistants and everything, so it's got to be awful tough for these players, don't you think? That's right, and there are actually a lot of assistants that are still around. A lot of assistants from the previous, they're still at Kyle, Kyle Derrickson is still around. Uh, Mike Heffernan was here last year, so there are a couple coaches in there it's a couple that I haven't named as well that have really helped in the transition between uh, head coach Joe Adam last year, Tim Lester the year before, and now obviously Ron plans. So as hard as it is to adjust to a new system, and that's something that plans talked about, you know, it's, uh, it's all about figuring it out at this point. And, <laughs> that's it. And we'll, we'll see what they can do here on defense. Whole new terminology as well, you know. So after the timeout, it's Ross Nash, the ball carrier, and he'll get across the 30. It's about the 31 yard line. Pretty good game that time, six yards on the pickup. Third down and call it four for the Maroons. To go back to your point about the terminology, sometimes it's a whole other language <laughs> that's brought in. It's like they've learned three languages in three years, some of the juniors and seniors yeah. on this team, so. And it looks like they're bringing it back to the 30, so it's gonna bring up third and five. Another key third down for both teams, really, right here. Indeed, we'll see if the Blue Jays bring the linebackers up. They're inching. Ryan has time now, and they try to flare it out, and they do to Ross Nash. Makes a move, cuts to the inside, and picks up a first down. Nicely done as he gets tackled at the 37-yard line, a pickup of seven. They brought the middle linebacker, Brian Tucker, on a blitz, but Ryan was able to elude it, find his open check down in Ross Nash, as we see here. Nice good. play by Ryan, under pressure to sidestep and find the open man. Yeah, he showed some pretty good poise. Stepped up in the pocket, under pressure, and dumped off a nice pass to Ross Nash. So first and 10 for the Maroons from their own 38-yard line. Patrick Ryan now out of the gun. Ryan is going to hand this one off. And the ball carrier, Chandler Carroll, Tackled on the play by Trent Howard. Ball is spotted at the 43-yard line. Five yards on the pickup, so second down. Call it five here for the University of Chicago. Carroll back in there again. Carroll looks like the, the quick, elusive back to his Ross Nash's straight-ahead running style. Patrick Ryan under center this time. Play action as he rolls out here to the near side. He's going to tuck it under and run himself. And he'll get out of bounds. Close to a first down. They will indeed pick up the first down at the 49. So they'll move to chains. And good heads up move by Patrick Ryan, knowing exactly where the first down marker was. Charlie Krieger immediately bit on the play action and then felt like he had to scramble back in, into coverage, but that opened up the near side, the near flat for Patrick Ryan to run and get the first down. On, 
from their own 49-yard line. Ryan handing this one off, and again, it's uh, Carroll, and he gets tripped up uh, right about the line of scrimmage. No, couple, gain, no gain on the, on the play. A couple Blue Jays in the area at that point. We got Trent Howard was in the area. I wasn't sure who grabbed the shoelaces, it seemed. Just a little shoelace tackle there on Carroll. It could have been any of the defensive linemen as well. A couple players, including Bayer, were number 95. They're both all in the area. They have even lost a yard here as they spotted back at the 48. So second down and 11 for the Maroons. Just a little over three minutes to go here in the opening quarter. And again, that, that's that similar play that time to Sid Reynolds. And Reynolds has a nice game, kind of that end around sweep inside the 40. And it will be a first down. Boy, Reynolds, a sophomore. Let's take another look at it. As he came in motion, cut it back up nicely and got a nice game. That's right, avoiding the blue. Another, Just another wrinkle, I suppose, in the Chicago offense. Just, they, they love to run straight ahead, but they also love to run that sweep, something to keep the defense off balance. Charlie Krieger was in on the tackle. Now they're in the offset eye as they hand it off to Ross Nash. And Ross, Ross Nash will get to the 37. John Eliadis and Marvin Carr in there on the tackle. Eliadis coming into this game leading the Blue Jays with 12 tackles on the season. Second down. They're going to spot it at the 38. A one-yard pickup for Zach. So this will be a second down and nine. Under two minutes to go, quick paced first quarter here from Langhorst Field. Home opener for the Blue Jays. Patrick Ryan handing it off. Ross Nash gets to the 35 yard line. He was brought down by John Eliadis. And it's gonna bring up third down and five here for the Maroons. This could be, again, four down territory for the Maroons. Not quite in field goal range, but to the point where if you punt it for a touchback, it's only a 15-yard punt, so possibly another chance for the Maroons to go for two here. Yeah, right now you're looking at like a 52-yard field goal, so you're right. I should say make that two down, two down play Two down here, territory, yeah. For two. See what they do here on third down. Third and five. Ryan going for it in the corner, and John Gormley was the intended receiver, and it's incomplete. Looks like Gormley had it in his hands, and then Charlie Krieger, the corner, was in there to either slap it away or just get enough of his hand on it. Let's see if we can to take get the another, ball out. Let's take another look at it here. Beautifully thrown ball by Ryan, and let's see Gormley. Boy, they're looking right into the sun, too. But you're right, Krieger was right there. Looked like Krieger's arm was inside the both arms of Gormley, and that's what jarred the ball loose. Well, you're right. Two down territory here on fourth and five. Ryan and the Maroons going for it here. Ryan trying to, wanted to get out into the flat, but instead hitting Sam Coleman, and Coleman's gonna get the first down, down to the 25. Jackson! The Blue Jay defense bit on the flat. It was a little pump fake by Ryan to the flat, but he saw a couple Blue Jays converging. And then another player, Sam Coleman, the wide receiver, just sat down in the soft spot in the zone. Yeah, you're right. Look at that little pump fake right there. And then they found Sam Coleman for the first down. The Blue Jays play a lot of cover, too. So a lot of times, and especially on those kind of plays, just finding the soft spot in the zone. First and 10 from the 26-yard line of Elmers. Boy, this has been an impressive drive for Chicago. Ryan going for the corner. And that one is incomplete. Reynolds was the intended receiver. Both Sid Reynolds and Nathan Massey seem to get behind the Blue Jay defense. Blue Jays possibly got away with a blown coverage there as both Maroons were converging towards the far corner. Take another look at it here as Ryan will bootleg action there. And Pretty good thrown ball. Boy, I'm impressed with Patrick Ryan here, the senior out of Fort Wayne, Indiana. He's been incredibly efficient this year, completing 29 of his, 25 of his 39 passes, and they've been in the lead a lot, so they haven't had to throw very much thus far this season. Second down, 
10 yards to go. Ross Nash spins to the 20. Pick up six. And they will probably not get another playoff here as that will be the end of the opening quarter. Switch ends of the field and uh, picked up six. So it's going to be third down and four yards to go for University of Chicago here as we start the second quarter momentarily. But, uh, boy, Luke, this has been an impressive, long, sustained drive for the Maroons. Indeed, a couple of huge conversions, including the fourth and five. And Ryan's really, I think, been making some wonderful throws sometimes. Sometimes they're just a little off the mark. Sometimes they're just bouncing off the hands or a Blue Jays making a good play to break it up. But you got to think if Ryan continues to throw the kind of balls that he's throwing that they're going to be successful in the passing game. Well, this is the 13th consecutive season that the Blue Jays and the Maroons have played each other. It, uh, it's also the end of the non-conference series as the Maroons will join the Southern Atlantic or I'm sorry, Southern Athletic Conference next year as a member in the football season starting next year. Carroll University will join the CCIW in 2016. Blue Jays actually lead the overall series 9-3. to However, the Maroons have won two of the last three meetings. Including last year, shutting out the Blue Jays at University of Chicago. Chris Wilkerson talked about him as the head coach, his second season as the head coach of the Maroons. They've got a third down and four situation here from the Blue Jay 20. Ryan on the play action as they spin it out. Oh, uh, far side is incomplete, had his man. And just came up a little bit short. The attended receiver, Justin Weaney, six foot junior out of San Diego, California. So fourth down and four, and they're going to bring their field goal unit in. This will be a 37 yard field goal attempt. Carl Kozlowski, and his field goal is good. 37-yard field goal by Kurzlowski ties the game up at three. Kurzlowski, a 6'2 junior out of South Barrington. Went to Loyola Academy up there in Wilmette. 14-49 remaining here in this first half. A pair of field goals. All the scoring so far. The kicking game, you got to think, is going to be extremely important not only for points and field goals, but also for field position especially in a game that should be tightly contested the whole way through and possibly quite low scoring as we saw last year with the Maroons winning 10 to nothing when they hosted the Blue Jays last year. And Got to think with the way these two teams play, long, methodical drives, you may not have a lot of time to, not, not a lot of chances to score points. And so yeah. as we saw that field goal right there on the replay, it's, it's extremely important to get those points when you can get them. And you have a feeling, Luke, these type of games that turnovers is just going to be huge in this game. That's right. And they were huge in, in Elmhurst's one loss of the season at Loris. The last four drives the Blue Jays had, they ended up turning the ball over, and that's really what did them in. And, uh. Yeah, they had seven turnovers in the game against Loris to start the season. From their own six, Miller. Oh, and Miller got tripped up across the 20 to the 23. Boy, if he didn't get tripped up there and he cuts to the outside, he may have been gone. Skyler Montefalco with a shoestring tackle there. There was, yeah, you could have seen Miller. He's speedy, and you could, you could see him sprinting down that sideline right now. He might still be running <laughs> if it right. wasn't for Montefalco making the nice play there. Just getting underway here in the second quarter. Another look at it is uh, you saw Miller trying to cut out and just got tripped up. Tied at three. 14-43 remaining here in this first half. Camilleri working out of the shotgun here. Williams to his right. Camilleri is going to keep it himself and is going to run right into Jackson Gary. But then 
on a good second effort, he gets about a yard maybe to the 25. Boy, I don't know how he got out of that. It's a nice spin move there by Camilleri, and it looked like Gary just had him completely wrapped up, but Camilleri was able to spin to his right and avoid a three-yard loss and instead gain a yard. Bring up second down and nine for the Blue Jays from their own 25. Good effort there by the quarterback. Joe looking over the Maroon defense. Long snap. Camilleri here to the near side. He's got Miller, and immediately Miller is shoved out of bounds by Chris Dengler, spotting it at the 27. Well, make it the 28-yard line. It's going to bring up third down and about seven. Nice throw by Camilleri on the replay. Just, just a quick out to the near side, short side. They have a little time for Kalen Miller to get some separation and then gain a couple of yards to make it a little bit more manageable in third and six. Third and six, yeah, they need to get to the 34. Let's pick up a first down. Big down here, third down and six. Camilleri on the draw. Here's Williams as he tries to cut it outside and he'll get met by Chris Dangler at the 32 short of the first down it's going to be a fourth down call at three and the punting unit coming out for the blue jays as we're seeing both defenses step up here in the second quarter so coming out to punt tom Fanukin. interesting play call their first draw we've seen from the blue jays yeah. lots of option looks this time trying to catch the Maroons off guard. Gained a couple yards, but just not quite enough for the first down. Beltrano is back deep for the Maroons. Left-footed punter, you don't see that too often. Beltrano bobbled it, lost it, and wisely just dove on it. And uh, he recovered it back at their own 28 and a half yard line. First and 10 for the Maroons. Make that the 24. Oh, check that, I'm sorry. That Beltrano there. Here's the, we'll see it on the replay. He calls for the fair catch. Nobody was really around him, but the ball really carried on him all of a sudden. The wind is blowing that way. Perhaps the wind carried it a little further than he thought, and a couple of Blue Jays were there, but just not quite in time to make that in chaotic play and possibly recover the loose ball. Look, it popped off his shoulder pad a little bit too, didn't it? it did. Patrick Ryan. No, handed ball, and you're right, they... Maroons primarily on the ground. It's Chandler Carroll, again, the ball carrier. He'll pick up two to the 26. Trying to get Carroll outside outside the line, just trying to get it, yeah. trying to get him outside and into the open space. You can tell that he's a quick guy and somebody that could break one if he gets enough room. The Blue Jay defense has done well to contain him on the inside. I was just going to say that the Blue Jay defense has been phenomenal here in this game so far. Second down, eight yards to go for the Maroons from their own 26. Ryan's going to roll out, throw. Boy, a wide open Colin Macri. And they've got a first down. That had to be a misassignment because Macri was wide open. Nobody was covering the flat on the far side. Usually you have the far corner. I believe that would have been Charlie Krieger, but I don't believe he's in the game at this point. It's going to be a first and 10. Let's take another look at it here. Nice pass. 16-yard reception to Macri. And he gets knocked out of bounds there right at the 42. Looks like Jake Pawlicki, the corner on that side, was a little too deep, leaving the flat open. Ryan stays under center. Chandler Carroll, maybe a yard, I would think. Nope, they actually lost a yard. They bring it back to the 41. Jacob Sislak, the defensive end, got in on that play. So to bring up second down and 11 for the Maroons. Sislak, the sophomore, seeing some action here at nose guard. I'd like to see the Blue Jays bring it here. 
Second down and 11. They still haven't brought much pressure yet no. in this game. Ryan working out of the gun. They quick hit to Nathan Massey across the middle, and Massey gets to the 50-yard line. He's going to be a couple yards short of the first down, but good recognition by Ryan to get rid of the ball quickly, and Massey with the reception. And the, U the Chicago offense is very well equipped to handle the blitz. They love to do some short, quick-hitting routes, as we saw on that replay right there with Massey just coming right over the middle from his slot position. Ryan, it was in and out of Ryan's hand, and probably less, almost a second, maybe even less. So even if the Blue Jays did bring pressure, it probably wouldn't have helped on that play. Key play right here in this first half. Third down in a yard. Maroons are gonna have the first down. Ross Nash still going and finally tackled at the 40 yard line, a gain of nine and a first down. There we'll check out the replay here as Rosh Nass off left tackle. Initially stuffed well by the Blue Jay right. defense, but then found a little hole to his left. And then was able to just keep those legs churning as much as he could. Ended up being a gain of nine in the first down. Spotting it at the 41 yard line. See if the Blue Jays can get a turnover here. Patrick Ryan now under center, first and 10. Ryan going to the air. He's got time, going deep into the far side. Bodies going down. Nathan Massey was the intended receiver. And it, it might be on Massey because it looked like he pulled the jersey of the defender. That's right. It, it's going to be really interesting. Let's see who they call this on as the judge comes back over to the head referee. Oh, they're calling it a defensive pass interference. Here, let's take another look at it here. We'll... Boy, oh boy. I... Hmm. I'm not sure if he thought maybe that the receiver was trying to come back through number third, through Jake Pawlicki, and that was the reason why, but I, I don't know about yeah, that. that. I'm not one. sure about that one. Hmm. That's a tough call for it the is. Blue Jays. It is. It gives another red zone trip, or at least close, excuse me, is 26. First and 10 as this drive continues for the Maroons. Yeah, that was a tough call. Ryan looking to the air again. Deep across the middle, and that one is incomplete. It was again Massey, the intended receiver. Second down and 10. They love to work Massey in over the middle, you can tell. It doesn't matter if it's shallow, if it's deep. They just love to work him in the middle of the field, and that was another. Good route, well defended by the Blue Jays, though, as we see Ryan had to throw the ball high to keep it away from the defender covering. That was number three, the safety, Billy Vieiro, on the coverage. Well, give some credit to this offensive line for the Maroons. They're giving Ryan a lot of time to throw the ball. Second down, 10. Ryan is going to roll out. Good coverage downfield. Ryan has nothing and is just going to have to tuck it under and He'll get shoved out of bounds at the 21. As you said, really good coverage by the Blue Jays right. there. Just nowhere for Ryan to throw it. Able to gain a couple of yards on the scramble, but Blue Jays de Blue Jay defense really showing itself strong here as we check out Ryan scrambling on the replay. Picked up four yards on the play. He actually got knocked out at the 22. So it's going to bring up, boy, another critical third down here. Third and six. From the 22, three wide receivers to the bottom left part of your screen. Ryan. And that one was tipped, and it's going to fall incomplete. And decision time now for Coach Wilkerson. Does he go for it here on fourth down or bring in the field goal unit? I think it's hard to give up points in this game. I think you got to go for the three. It but would. I don't know what, what he's going to choose. It looks like the offense is staying out on the field. Yeah, it would be about a 39-yarder. They converted on a 37-yarder. It's certainly not a, not a leg thing. Is there is plenty of leg on right. the 37-yarder, even if it is into the wind. Well, here we go. The Maroons are going to go for it here. 
fourth and six. They need to get to about the 16 yard line. Ryan throwing pass is complete to number six. Boy, that was Chris Mason. And it's going to be right at the 16 yard line. And if that's the case, that's going to be a first down. Wow. They're checking out on the replay, and that's a gutsy decision oh, by the man. Chicago coaching staff. And Chris Mason really did just make the play. I mean, just barely. He had to kind of dive over, and you see the spot. I think the initial read was Massey over the middle, but when he wasn't there, then Mason was able to come more towards the near side. Good throw and a good catch, just yep. enough for the first down. Maroons in the red zone now, first and 10 from the 16. They hand it off to Ross Nash, and he's not going to go nowhere. Jimmy Abbott, big number 99, was there to make the stop. Nice play by the Blue Jay defensive line. Just with no gain on that play, it forces now a second and 10. 7-19 remaining here in this first half. We are tied at three in this non-conference battle between Elmhurst and the University of Chicago. Hey, Cosmo, stuff. Second and ten for the Maroons. Ryan under pressure. He spins away from a tackle. He's got some room. Now he's going to tuck it under and get out of bounds at about the ten. Oh, man, the Blue Jays almost had a sack. I thought that sack was for sure there. I believe it was Eddie Bayer, number 95, who was in on the play. Got a nice hit on Ryan, but Ryan was able to spin away. Let's take another look at it, see how Ryan got away. Looks like Bayer went for the big hit up high. Didn't wrap up, and that allowed Ryan to come scrambling towards the near side. Right at the 10-yard line. Third down and four. They need to get to the six to pick up a first down. Patrick Ryan. Deep drop. Now he steps up, throws it into the end zone, and it's a touchdown. That's number 85, Brian Welch, the tight end. Out of Wheaton. And University of Chicago leads for the first time tonight. Another play where Ryan is out scrambling. A semi-type, a broken play, but it, it wide open on the left side of the end zone was his receiver. And a big target, too, Well, 6'6", 230-pound tight end. And in for the extra point, Kurtzlowski is good, so it is now 10-3 in favor of the Maroons. 10 unanswered. 6'19 remaining here in this first half. So the Blue Jays need to get back to work offensively. But I tell you, I, I've been impressed with this Patrick Ryan, this quarterback. He's just making right decisions, Luke, and uh, tucking it under when he has to, making the right reads and not passing when he's under duress. And he did a great job of leading the Maroons to that score. That's right. He's just so calm when the play breaks down. Yeah. The play has broken down a lot. The, the Blue Jays have gotten some pressure on him. But just a couple, it's on every play, he always seems to be calm. I mean, here you go. You got... Defensive lineman coming in, and actually three Blue Jays coming in, and then he's, he keeps his eyes downfield, keeps looking for the open receiver. And right there, left side of the end zone, is his big 6-6 target. Really wide open, easy pitch and catch for the touchdown. 10-3 to in favor of the Maroons. Again, 6-19 remaining here in this first half. It's a season home opener for the Blue Jays. Miller is back deep along with Cameron Mackey. Mackey is a freshman out of North Aurora. See if the Blue Jays can get a good return here. Not much wind to speak of. The wind has died down. Temperature is in the 60s. Oh, this is a short kick. It's going to be taken at the 28-yard line. And the Blue Jays are going to get pretty good field position here, close to the 40-yard line. I believe that was Anthony Beltrano on the return. Oh, 
Just a little pooch kick for Chicago. It'll, it'll give the Blue Jays solid field position though. Their own 39 yard line. Interesting choice from the Maroons possibly seeing how Kalen Miller almost broke that last one and maybe not wanting to kick in his direction one more time. Let's see if Josh Williams can break one off, huh? Three wide receivers to the top. Camilleri on first and 10 from their own 39 and on the option Camilleri is gonna keep it and he'll get tackled at about the 43, pickup of two. Second down and eight. Boy, I thought a pitch to, jo pitch to Josh Williams would have been a nice gain for the Blue Jays, but Camilleri playing it safe, possibly seeing a couple defenders in his face, not wanting to throw a costly turnover away here with just under six minutes to play in the half. Josh Williams just five carries, 27 yards thus far, and 19 of his 30 yards came on one play. Second down, six yards to go for the Blue Jays. From their own 43, Camilleri hands it off to Josh Williams and nowhere. It was Scott Mainquist saying hello to Josh Williams. No game. And there's that defensive line for the Maroons again. Just so strong at stopping the run. They have been in their first two games and they've really done a, really, done a great job of doing the same thing here. Uh, but we'll see if the Blue Jays can possibly break something to the outside. Here we go with uh, th another third down. Yeah. Joe Camilleri is going to have to probably throw for this one. Who knows? Maybe they'll try some, but they're in the pistol, so we'll see what Camilleri can do with this third down. Under five minutes to go here in the first half. Ten to three in favor of the Maroons. Camilleri, pressure coming. He steps up, and he will get sacked. Loss of a yard. Skyler Bonifalco was there to... Record the sack, loss of a yard. Montefalco, 14 tackles on the season, four for loss. That his first sack of the season. He's also got an interception return for a touchdown. I like that call by the Maroon defense. They, they had him coming. They, they've been aggressive on yes. third down. They've, they've really come after the quarterback. And that time, another, and this time a three and out for the Blue Jays, having to punt back to Vincent Beltrano and the Maroons. Tom Fanukin, the left-footed punter. Oh, he gets off a beauty. Beltrano all the way back to his 17-yard line. Brings it back. Nice return across the 30 to the 33 as well. They'll mark it. 3.49 to go here in the first half. University of Chicago 10, Elmhurst 3. Another look at that booming punt. Yeah, that was a really beautiful punt. Hung out in the air for a long time. Yeah. Deep, all the way back to the Chicago 17. And then a good return by Beltrano just to get some of those yards back. So the Maroon offense back out onto the field. Boy, the Blue Jay defense, they, they've been out there for a long time here in the second quarter, haven't they? That's right, that's right. The, first, the one sustained drive happened in the first. Ross Nash. Met right at the line of scrimmage, and that's going to be about it. No gain on the play. For all the talk we've done about the Maroon defensive line, how about the Blue Jay yes. defensive line? Nice play there. Jackson Smith there on the tackle, number 91. Good swarming defense. A couple of teammates with the tackle in there as well. Loss of a yard. The ball is at the 31. Or check that right at the 32 yard line, second and 11. As we approach the three minute mark of the second quarter. Now the, the give is to Reynolds. They ran that play successfully a couple times here in this first half and picks up about four on that play. That was an emphatic tackle by the safety. Billy Vieiro coming up from his safety position really planted Reynolds in the ground on that one. Check it out on the replay here. That's a big hit from Vieiro to stop Reynolds right in his tracks. This has really been a good football game. Both teams really not making a lot of mistakes. That defensive pass interference call, kind of a questionable call. That, that was tough. That's a tough call from, from the Blue Jays' standpoint. Yeah. 
extended the maroon drive. The motion man, Reynolds. Ryan rolling out to the far side, throwing it off balance. Reynolds with the reception. Right at the 45, it's going to be a first down for the Maroons. Check it out. They're going to spot at the 46. And again, it's just rolling out is the quarterback, Ryan, and just sitting down in the zone somewhere, finding that open, finding those open spaces, I believe. I don't know if that was Reynolds' route. He was coming around in motion. But there he is just sitting down right on the sideline, right where the Blue Jays are. And it's another good pitch and catch from Ryan, again, staying calm under the pressure of the Blue Jays coming after him. First and 10 Maroons from their own 46-yard line. Under two minutes to go here in this first half. They keep it on the ground and close to midfield. It's going to be a three-yard pickup for Ross Nash. And boy, Luke, you know, looking back over this first half, remember when the Blue Jays had it first and goal from inside the one and, and the Maroons made that stop and they got, the, they got the field goal out of it, but boy, oh boy, they could have punched that in for a six. And I think that was a big momentum huge, play for the yeah. Maroons to be able to stop. Yes, yeah, since, yeah, since that, uh, they've been fired up here tonight. That's right, 10 straight points after that field goal and after that stop, which could have put the Blue Jays up 7 nothing. Instead, it was 3-0. Yeah, second and seven from their own 49. Ryan has got his man, and it's going to be a first down. That's Nathan Massey. Another beautifully thrown ball. Massey out of Bartlett. And it's going to be spotted at the 37. Let's take another look at it here, Luke. Again, plenty of time for Ryan. And then he's able to step into his throw, which is so important. And able to just throw a dart to Massey down the field. And the, the offensive line has really done a great job for the Maroons just being able to allow Ryan to step into his throws when he's in the pocket. A lot of times he's not in the pocket. Right. But when he's in the pocket, he's been able to step into his throws. And this time, this is going to be Carroll. A good mix, a good balance offensively as well for the Maroons. Definitely in this offensive line, we talk about the pass blocking, but they're run blocking. It's been extremely well there. That's a big hole there on the right side. Yeah that the Maroon offensive line was able to open up against the Blue Jay defense. Jake Garabedian was there, the outside linebacker to make the tackle. Final moments, 40 seconds to go. Second down, five yards to go for the Maroons. Ryan with all kinds of time and room. He fires the ball and it is, it's gonna be caught. Wow, I thought it might have been an incomplete pass, but Colin Macri comes up with it. Now three officials are gonna, are gonna discuss and the back judge, Glenn Jackson, comes in and says, uh, no, that bounced, incomplete. Yeah, they came sprinting in, yeah. signaling incomplete. Good job by the official, talking things over and getting it right. Third down, five yards to go with 32 seconds to go. Now those two timeouts that Chicago burned earlier in that first quarter are going to be extremely important down the stretch. Take another mm, Close. I think the, the bottom part of the ball did indeed hit the ground. Good call by the official. Third down, five, Ryan, and he's got Massey. It's gonna be first and goal for the Maroons, but they're running the, facing the clock. It stops as they move the chains, 23 seconds to go. And it looks like Ryan will just spike this one to stop the clock. And there he does, and it stops at exactly 20 seconds remaining. Boy, again, Patrick Ryan to Nathan Massey. Man, at the, about the three-yard line. That's been a dynamic connection this far in this game, especially over the middle. And here you go, you see a little slant by Massey coming out from his tight end position, finding the soft spot in the zone. Right. And Ryan finding him with really just another great throw. Ryan Tucker was there to make the tackle. Well, boy, this would be a big stop for the Blue Jays if they could, if they could stop him here. Of course, the Maroons certainly would like to put up another touchdown before the end of the half. Ten to three, Maroons, and they're threatening here. Second and goal, and got tripped up as 
He, he tried to cut it back inside. That was Sid Reynolds. Looked like he may have just lost his footing. He did, he did, as he tried to cut back. You're right. He slipped. Trying to go north-south. Obviously, it's what you want to do when you're in this type of zone. But I think these three yards are going to have a huge implication on what happens in the second half, not only for momentum's sake, but obviously for point's sake as well. I mean, yeah. Blue Jays already down seven. A stop here, I think, would go a great would go great lengths, not only to keep them alive on the scoreboard, but also keep them alive in momentum. How big was that that misdirection play with uh, with Williams, which I, I thought he his foot hit the pylon. I th I called it a touchdown, but they spotted it just inside the one, and they just couldn't punch it in. Yeah, that last step he took was definitely inside the pylon. Yeah. I I'm just I the only thing that I th I think what the ref saw was this the, the step before that. Okay. Because he stepped with yep. his right foot and then crossed over with his left foot back more towards the inside. But whether that, whether his right foot was inbounds or out of bounds, it's it's hard to know. Yeah. And obviously, it's an extremely tough call for the official, and one that the Blue Jays may look back on, depending on how this obviously this possession goes. And then obviously, you got a whole another half of football to play. A little bit of confusion. Sam Coleman, number five, coming in late. Now he goes to the slot to the left. And that's where Ryan looking, and it looks like he's looking for that left shoulder, but. It's going to be incomplete, and now what do you do? Fourth down and goal from the three. Good coverage from Marvin Carr. He's facing off against the 6'2", Colin Macri. It's a height disadvantage, but Carr, as we can see on the coverage, hanging right with him. And so it looks like they're going to bring their field goal unit in. This will be about a 21-yard field goal attempt. Zlowski hit from 37 earlier, and he hits again from 21. And three more points on the board for the Maroons. It is now 13 to three, and just over six seconds remaining. Blue Jays struck first in the first half with a field goal, but then 13 unanswered points by the Maroons, and that's where we're at right now, 13 to three. And Boy, I hate to see the time of possession in that second quarter. <laughs> yeah, the time of possession, it, it's, it's got to be obviously in favor of the Maroons. And, but I think that that stop is, so, is going to be so important for the Blue Jays heading into the locker room. Yeah. I, and obviously there, there will be another play here on the kickoff. You never know what could happen. But just to, to go in down 10 as opposed to down 14, I just, I just think psychologically it's, it's, a whole, it's a whole new ball game in, both, in, in each scenario. Blue Jay offense just couldn't get it on track. They started out pretty well, but they give some credit to that defensive line for the Maroons. They stopped Josh Williams in the running game pretty good in this first half. But there's still another half to go. Lots of football left to be played. Oh, yeah. Miller and Mackey are back deep. See how the Maroons play this kick. If they do inside, decide to kick it deep, no, nope. it's going to be a squibber, and it's going to be stopped at the 36, and five and a half seconds remaining in the half, so the Blue Jays will get one play out of this. You talk about the time of possession. Well, the time of possession in the first half, Chicago has held the ball 18 minutes, 11 seconds, and the Blue Jays 11 minutes, 43 seconds. Yeah. So we'll see what Coach Plans and Camilleri decide to do here with just over five seconds to go. It's definitely, it's almost a seven minute advantage for the Maroons in this first half. And that's something that Elmhurst not used to. Elmhurst is, is used to being the one who has the time of possession for the most part. So it'd be nice for this defense to get a nice break going into half. Camilleri gonna air it deep. And it is incomplete. Time expires. Adam Bowers was the intended receiver. And that will end it for the first half. Chris Dengler was there on the coverage for the Maroons. One half of football in the books from Langhorst Field. It's the Maroons from the University of Chicago leading by 10. 
over the Blue Jays 13 to three. We'll take a timeout and come back with second half action. This is Elmhurst, our kind of town. Making the world a better place is an intricate puzzle. And piece by piece, the women and men of Rotary have worked hard to fight hunger, promote literacy, and move the world toward peace. But there is still much to be done, still some missing pieces. And one of those missing pieces is you. Learn how you can help Rotary put together a better world. Welcome back to Langhorst Field as we get set for a second half action. Remember, the Blue Jays won the toss and elected to defer, so they'll get the ball here to start the third quarter. Miller and Marvin Carr are back deep for the Blue Jays. 13 to three, it's gonna be Carr tracking it down in the far corner from his own two. And while well, they're blowing the whistle, they're maybe saying he went out of bounds there. I think he did, he went out of bounds. At the five, so a tough break to start the second half for the Blue Jays. First half numbers by the Blue Jays, averaging 241 yards rushing per game. In that first half, just 40 yards rushing. Number of plays, the Maroons 40 and just 19 for the Blue Jays. Yeah, it was really just one re really good sustained drive for the Blue Jays. They got most of the chunk of their yards. They only have 87 total yards in that first half. And now, deep in their own field, deep in their own territory, see what Camilleri and the Blue Jays can do in their first drive of the second half. Just one penalty in that first half, that defensive pass interference penalty against the Blue Jays. Josh Williams opens up the third quarter with a no gain on that play. Back to the five. Williams in that first half, just six carries for 27 yards. So he's been held in check after a 306 yard performance a week ago against Olivet College. A, a like school a, record. I was gonna say, this is a completely different defense from what they faced last week. I mean, this, this is defense, total defense, second in the country. Just giving up 128 total yards per game. Second down and 10 from the five. Camilleri is going to throw under heavy pressure. I'm not sure how he got that off. But it's going to just be incomplete. Brandon Bolock, the senior, applying the pressure. Here's another look at it. Bolock, the leading tackler for this Chicago team, just all over Camilleri. And that's some really impressive strength just to be able to throw that with Bolock. Basically hanging on your jersey at that point. Yeah, the defensive line for the Maroons, that's been the story as well. And now it's a third and 10 for Elmhurst from its own five. Camilleri sets his feet, throws to Miller, a little bit overthrown, and it's gonna be incomplete. Fourth down now. Blue Jays are gonna punt from their own end zone. Throw just a little too high from Camilleri. It was a good read, a good good decision. Just got a little away from him as we see here on the replay. Stepped into his throw, had some time. Just the throw just a little bit too high and solid coverage on that far side by Vincent Beltrano, the cornerback. He's now back deep. Well, Bayer is gonna punt. Beltrano is going to let this one bounce. It's going to go out of bounds near midfield. It's going to be finally spotted at the 48. That's a pretty good punt from Bayer there. It was high, didn't give Beltrano any chance to take it. 43-yard oh. punt by Bayer. So now the Maroons come out after scoring 13 points in that second quarter. A couple of Kurzlowski field goals, a 37-yarder and a 21-yarder, and a 10-yard touchdown pass from Patrick Ryan to Brian Welch. 
6.19 left to play in the first half, our only touchdown of the game. Opening moments of this third quarter. Patrick Ryan under center, first and 10 from the Blue Jay 48 yard line. It's Ross Nash, and he bounces off a couple of would be tacklers, and he's going to get to the 45. He'll pick up three, it'll bring up second down seven. Just lining up in the power eye. No, no question marks on this one. I'm sure you know it's coming. It's going to be power straight ahead. And Ross Nash was able to keep his legs churning. Got, got about four yards on that play. Total offensive yards in the first half for the Maroons, 189 compared to 87 for Elmers. And they, they really controlled this game, I thought, in that second quarter. Yeah, line of scrimmage just overall. Yeah. They're going to keep it on the ground. It's Ross Nash again. He'll bring it up to the 42. Pick up a three, which will bring up third down and, and four. Another key third down. The Maroons in the first half, five of ten on third down, but... Even more impressive was two of two on fourth down. Fourth down, sure, yeah. And it's just, you know, slow, methodical drives and then just keeps that Blue Jay defense out on the field. Reynolds going in motion. Ryan on the fake, and he's got his man. That is Welsh. That's the guy who caught the touchdown in the first half, and he's going to pick up a first down here. That's another high pass to his tall target in Welch as we see. Play action off the fake, bootlegging to the right. Six foot then, six inches, six, yeah. And there's probably aren't many players on that Chicago roster that could go up and get that ball. No. At six six, Welch is right there. First and 10 from the 37 yard line of the Blue Jays. Back to the ground, Ross Nash. To the 35, pickup of two. No secrets this, this half from Chicago. They're, they want to run it right down, and they'll try to throw some on play action if they have to, but I'm sure they're content with just continuing to power the football straight ahead and just to continue to wear down this Blue Jay defense, which has been on the field for already 20 minutes of this game, just starting the third quarter. Blue Jays are going to be idle next week, and then they'll be right here against Augustana in two weeks to open up CCIW play. Oh, good defensive pursuit. Trent Howard was there to make the stop. A good, good effort that time, bringing down Carroll. Let's check it out on the replay. Another sweep play. They like to get Carroll on the outside, but Trent Howard just all over it. Read it immediately. Marvin Carr also there to help clean up. All right, big third down here now. Third down and 10 is the Blue Jay crowd starting to come to life here for the first time. From the 37 yard line, they need to get to the 27 to pick up a first down. And that bootleg now throws, and it's complete to Nathan Massey, his favorite receiver, first and 10 for the Maroons. And again, Patrick Ryan, third down, crowd fired up. But what does he do? He's calm, he's cool, he's collected, runs the boot leg to the outside, plants his foot, and throws a nice ball over the top to Massey. Perfectly thrown ball to the junior. Boy, oh boy, Patrick Ryan has just been outstanding. See him directing traffic. Massey, perfect pass. The reception by Massey, first and 10 from the 22. Ryan goes back to the ground. It's Ross Nash inside the 20 to the 17. Looks like on forward progress, and they're in the red zone, and the Maroons are a perfect three for three once they get to the red zone. That's right, just, just getting points. It's so important yeah. in this kind of game. You know it's going to be ground and pound. You know it's probably going to be low scoring, so just to get any sort of points in the red zone is extremely important on every trip and every chance you have to score points. Six yard gain, so it's gonna be second down and four. Ryan gonna throw. Off balance throw, and that one is out of bounds. Uh, Charlie Krieger, a little bit of body contact there, but 
No call, no harm, no foul, right? Just making sure the receiver was out of the play there. there even, even though it was <laughs> it was definitely a throwaway ball from Ryan. Yeah. Set up third and four, but either way, just smart for Ryan not to force a pass in the red zone. Well, you'd be looking right now at a 34-yard field goal if the Blue Jays can hold them here on third and four. Watch Massey lining up in the slot on the near side. From the 17. Well, instead, they keep it on the ground. It's Ross Nash, and he's going to go nowhere. It was Nick Spracklin with the tackle for the Blue Jays and brings up fourth down. What a great individual play by Spracklin there, getting around his offensive lineman, grabbing the leg, as we see here on the replay. Just able to hold on to that leg. Ross Nash is not a... He's a pretty big guy. So just to get his leg down and hold it there, making sure to limit the Maroons to a field goal attempt. 35-yard field goal attempt, plenty of distance, and that one is good. So Kurzlowski now with three field goals for the Maroons. A 37-yarder, a 21-yarder, and now a 35-yarder. And more points for the Maroons. It is now 16-3. to three in favor of the University of Chicago. But again, third, third, another good, another good stop for the Blue Jays. And not only does that make it, it makes it 16 to three, which means it's still two possession game. You're still two solid drives away from taking the lead here in this game. Great atmosphere here at Langhorst Field here on the campus of Elmhurst College. And folks, if you're at home, jot down these dates for you. These are the rest of the uh, home games at Elmhurst, October, uh, well, I should say October 4th, a couple weeks against Augustana, October 18th against North Park, and November 1st against Wheaton, and November 15th against North Central. Final regular season game against the Cardinals. Get a chance, bring the family out to Langhorst Field and enjoy Blue Jay football in person. Great night here tonight. Week number three of the season. Nine minutes remaining here in the third quarter. Blue Jays need to go to work offensively here. And bringing it back for the Blue Jays is Carr. Pretty good return. Blue Jays first and 10 from their own 27. Once again, as the Blue Jays start this drive, gotta think it's important keep keep this defense off the field for a little while as we check out the return. Marvin Carr taking it up the middle and then trying to move off to the left, but a good play by the coverage team. Still a solid return. 28-yard line. The Blue Jays will start this drive. Miller slot here to the near side as uh, Josh Williams just to the right of Camilleri, out of the gun. Let's see if the Blue Jays can just put together a couple of first downs here and get the ball moving. Camilleri, quick hit to the far side, pass complete. Adam Bowers with the reception. And they're going to spot it at the 33, a pickup of six. We'll bring up second and four. Strong throw from Camilleri there. Cornerback on the far side, Beltrano, was converging. But Camilleri able to just get that ball in as we check it on the replay. Just, in the, it really wasn't the perfect spot. There's not a better spot it could have been thrown with the Beltrano converging on Bowers on the play. Yeah, Beltrano was coming up quickly, wasn't he? He is quick, he's fast. You've seen him on the punt returns, and he's also got good short distance speed, as we saw there. Second down, call it five yards to go for the Blue Jays. And a little misdirection, it's Williams. He'll have the first down as he crosses the 40. And Josh gets knocked out of bounds at the 42 and a Blue Jay first down. You really can't say Elmhurst with football without saying the name Williams. And there's, there's Josh again on that misdirection play, the same play that they ran for almost for a touchdown in the, fir in the first quarter. Check it out. They try to fake to the right and then ends up cutting up to the left. It's the same play they ran in that first quarter, and it's been extremely effective. Went off for 19 for Josh in the first time, and now... Another first down here for the Blue Jays. Their first first down in a, in a while. It's going to be nice for this defense to get some time game plan and get some rest here on the sideline. 
Williams hometown of Woodridge, Illinois. Went to Downers Grove South High School. Claxon going in motion for the Blue Jays. Oh boy, a little miscommunication there. Camilleri is just going to have to keep it and he'll get tackled at the 41. Not exactly sure what happened there. It looked like he wanted to hand off to Williams on a sweep, but Josh wasn't there to take it from him. See, he thought he thought Williams was behind him. He was right. actually to his left. Yeah. Under seven minutes to go now in the third quarter. 16 to three in favor of the Maroons. One touchdown and four field goals. Second down and 11. Blue Jays from their own 41. Camilleri with time fires, and boy, that one nearly picked off. Brandon Bullock saw daylight. Mm. Yeah, Bullock had Bullock had had my had his eyes on the end zone on that yeah, one. He did. He knocked it down. It's still a good play to force the Blue Jays here third and eleven. Let's another look at it here. Bullock, he was looking pick six on that one. He read that route beautifully. Senior defensive end out of Naples, Florida. Beautiful place, Naples. Oh, I was there over the summer. Gorgeous. Everyone needs to go to downtown Naples. <laughs> it's a great place to hang out. <laughs> Third down, 11 yards to go. Camilleri now rolling here to the near side. Looking downfield, going to throw deep. And boy, good coverage on the play, but there's a flag. Jacob Romeo was the, was the safety there on the coverage. They may hit him up for, with an interference. Wow, they are. That's what they're going to do. It's going to be pass interference on Romeo. And I, boy, I don't know. I, I didn't see much either. He extended his arm, I suppose. Well, you know what? The Blue Jays got a defensive pass interference call in the first half, right? So that's we're, right. We're even. We're, we're, <laughs> we're going to call it even now, but that's boy, right. that, that's another pass interference call that hard to be sure about. Two guys just kind of went up for the ball. It's just like, you know, let them let go. Let them go after it. Camilleri kind of had to stare down the barrel there. He had one Chicago player just running straight in on him and he he stepped into his throw and threw it down the field and good things happen when you get a one-on-one -on -one deep down the field ball is marked at the 44 yard line of the maroons see if the blue jays can take advantage williams again on a little bit of misdirection there and it's jackson gary the sophomore bringing down williams at the 44 no gain on the play that time they snuffed out the misdirection they ran it again, just like they ran it a couple plays ago. And this time, the Maroons were ready for it. It's been a tough night for Josh, but it only takes one. But again, they're going up against a very good defensive line from the University of Chicago. Under six minutes to go here in the third. Second and ten for Elmhurst. Camilleri handing it off to Williams. He cuts back in a good run inside the 40 to the 38-yard line. Bring up third down in about five. Got to love the way Josh gets north and south. I love the way that he does that. Very similar to his brother in that way. It's, it's a lot of north-south. You don't, don't need to bounce it outside as much. You just got to, as you see here on the replay, he's going to start out to the left, and he's going to turn straight up field. And that's how you gain your yards. Got to turn it, trying to turn upfield as immediately as you can. First hole you see, get it upfield, gain those yards to make it a third and manageable. Yeah, third down and four. Could be in one of those two down territory situations. Camilleri and, oh, movement, oh boy. Yeah, that's, oh my. That has got to be some type of unsportsmanlike conduct there. Just all sorts of laundry on the field at this point. Ryan Oros, junior defensive end, just laid into a Blue Jay. I mean, just extended his arms out after the penalty. Here, all right, there's the movement. And look at 41. Now watch. That is uncalled for. So the first part's a five-yard false start, but that sure. is just completely unnecessary. That should be a... Uns all right. There you go. 
Great job. Great job by referee Mike Cunningham and this officiating crew, in my opinion. I agree. That was just unnecessary contact. Yeah. No need for him to lay into a Blue Jay. Right. Just no need. Ten yard penalty on the play. That was Claxon and Camilleri was all over that Chicago player after he pushed him down. He was over there and his teammates kind of had to restrain him a little bit, make sure he wouldn't get, wouldn't blow his lid. But uh, so that's uh, an, an, an automatic first down. Excuse me, Luke. So that's right. Yeah. See if the Blue Jays again. Well, the three officials now are still talking things over. I think they're trying to figure out if the spot of the ball is correct. And it looks like they're satisfied. It is spotted at the tw at the uh, 28. That's right. Yep. Under five minutes to go here in the third. First and ten from the 28. Linebackers creeping up, showing blitz. Camilleri, the quick slide pattern, and it's complete inside the 20, and the Blue Jays are in the red zone. Miller with the reception, a gain of seven. I love the adjustment the Blue Jays have made in this have quick hitting passes. It's very similar to the way Chicago did it. As we check it out on the replay, you're going to see the fake to Williams and then the immediate slant. The ball is in and out of Joe Camilleri's hands in a second, maybe a second and a half. Well, it's going to be second down and one as they give him a nine-yard reception on that play. So second and short. Blue Jays can do a lot of things here. And out of the pistol, Claxon going in motion. They pass it to the far side to Claxon. And he'll get wrapped up immediately after the catch. Minimal gain. But they pick up a first down. And here's that sustained drive that we've been, that the Blue Jays have really needed as we see another just quick hitting pass. Good job by Camilleri to avoid Bullock, who is coming in on him and barreling down. So the ball is spotted at the 16. Great opportunity here for the Blue Jays to cut into this maroon 13-point lead. Miller, the motion man. Camilleri will keep it. Oh, he tried to cut it back up and ran right into Jackson Gary, who's had a number of solo tackles tonight. Oh, that was a big hit that Camilleri took. He seems to be fine. Oh, that's cer that'll certainly jar you a little bit, wake you up. Yeah. <laughs> I think he knew he couldn't He couldn't beat Bullock to the far side, and so decided to get as many yards as he could by turning it upfield. But he did pick up two yards. That's the kind of hit you don't want your quarterback to take, though. <laughs> no. Not for the long haul. That's not going to be good. Second down and eight. Camilleri's been tough. He's been he's been taking some hits. He has. Back up a year ago. Here's Williams. And Williams met by Greg Tomei, the junior free safety. Williams with a couple up the middle. Hey, he backed up Joe Furco in 2012 sure when the Blue Jays had their great season and then came in as a starter last year, ended up getting injured middle middle of the season then came back to start late. Well, we're at a third down now. Third and five from the 11. So they need to get to the six. They can pick up a first down. Bowers split up to the upper left-hand part of your screen. They want Miller in motion. Camilleri. Pass is complete. Is it enough for a first down? Again, they need to get to the six. Looks like it like they're moving the chains. There, it's at the four. And it's going to be first and goal. First and goal, Blue Jays from the four. Here, first and five, they should do it. They're going to score, this is it. Boy, and just like the second quarter that the University of Chicago kind of dominated at the time of, Blue Jays are doing that here in the third with this drive. That's right. Another quick hitting pass from Camilleri. Yeah. Ball in and out of his hands quickly. Got to like this drive. Blue Jays need to capitalize, need to get six out of this one. That's right. First and goal from the four. 
Camilleri on the option. He's going to keep it. He's going to come in, and it's going to be a touchdown. touchdown. Joe Camilleri, four yards out. And it's 16-9 to nine now. Joe Camilleri's fifth rushing touchdown of the season. Brett Bayer now in for the extra point. Tom Fanukin will hold here for the Blue Jays. And the extra point is perfect to make it 16 to 10. And now we got ourselves a ball game here. 1-11 to go in the third. We were saying how important it was for the Blue Jays to get another long, methodical drive, and there it was. Exactly it what was they did. Long, methodical, short, quick hitting passes, solid with the run, using the misdirection, and then Really using Josh Williams on the option as a decoy. Joe Camilleri cutting right up field and able to get into the end zone. Joe Camilleri, five touchdown, touchdowns rushing on the season. I think it's got to be, he's a quick guy and he's a fast guy, but that's got to be a product also as we look at the replay of everybody focusing on Josh Williams. And Camilleri's tough. He'll take, he'll run over a guy, he'll take a hit. And the Blue Jays with their first touchdown of the game, now within six. It's a ball game once again. <laughs> sure is, and we got ourselves two good teams battling it out. Playing very good football, not a lot of penalties. It's been a well-played game. Both quarterbacks have played well here tonight. That's right, for as much talk as we've been said on Patrick Ryan of Chicago, who's had a phenomenal game, Joe Camilleri is right there with him. He has, yeah. He's, he's, been... he's quick hitting routes, he was extremely effective on that drive. Quick hitting routes, Claxon on the slant, Miller on the slant, and especially also Claxon on the quick out. I mean, and the Blue Jay coaching staff has done well to give Cam Larry the ball and then get it right out of his hands quickly. And that long drive by the Blue Jays, Luke, that kind of gave the defense some extra time to get some rest because they played an awful lot of football out there in the second quarter as they come out on the field now. That's right. They, Chicago had the ball for over seven more minutes than the Blue Jays in that first half. They, yeah. As we said, I think they ran 40 offensive plays to the Blue Jays, 17 in that first half. And now the time of possession getting much closer, just about two minutes and 30 seconds of separation after that long drive. And now we got about a quarter and a little extra to play, and Blue Jays are right there, now with a rested defense and a confident offense. First and 10 Maroons from their own 30-yard line with just over a minute remaining here in the third. They keep it on the ground. This is uh, it's Ross Nash again, the senior running back. Picked up two. Second down and eight. See if the defense can come up with a turnover here. 37 seconds remaining here in the third. Ryan. Wanted to flare it out here. Instead, hits Sam Coleman across the 40 to the 42. It's going to be a first down. Clock stops as they move the chains. 24 seconds to go in the quarter. Again, under pressure was Ryan, but he was able to elude it. As you look here, a couple of Blue Jays coming in on him, but Ryan able to find the open target in the soft spot of the zone. Seen that play work in the first half where they fake that little screen, that little flare, and then hit a guy in the middle of the field. And they're trying to pull the, the cornerback in the flat, pull the linebacker down towards the flat, which then leaves that quick hitting slant or out type pattern open in the middle of the field. That is the end of the third quarter, so we'll switch sides here. Get ready for the fourth quarter. We got a good one here, folks, from Langhorst Field in Elmhurst. 16 to 10 in favor of the visiting Maroons. The Blue Jays with a nice, long, sustained drive in that third quarter to score a touchdown and get to within six. Should be in for a good fourth quarter here tonight. 
both teams playing just really well. No, not a lot of mistakes, not a lot of penalties, really no turnovers yet even in this game. So just overall good execution. And now it's just going to be a matter of who can execute in this fourth quarter. Can the Blue Jays sustain the offensive pressure they just created in this on that last drive in the Blue Jay defense? find their lungs did they find their lungs yeah. during that long drive so that they can get a key stop but or can the maroons keep enforcing themselves that's a good point that's a good point I, it, the refreshed legs of this defense could be a factor first and 10 now for the maroons from their own 41 yard line ryan gonna hand it off About a two-yard pickup on the play. Good defense there and a good stop. Second down, eight yards to go. The ball carrier again was uh, number 10 for the uh, Maroons. That's Carroll. Ball resting at the 43-yard line, so it's going to be second and eight. Opening moment of this fourth quarter. Blue Jays home opener from Langhorst Field. Play action. It's going to be Ryan throwing, and it is oh incomplete, intended for Massey. Honorable, almost picked it off on the deflection. The throw was behind the intended target, Massey. Throwing on the run was Ryan, and Honorable almost picked that one right, right off the turf. Just couldn't quite get under it. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the type of play the Blue Jay defense is looking for. That's Something to spark this crowd up, and boy, listen to this crowd getting into it now. Third down and eight. Third and eight from their own 43. Ryan rolling here to the near side. Still looking, looking, throwing off balance. And did Coleman come up with the reception? No, he was out of bounds. So the Blue Jay defense has held. Fourth down and eight. Looked like he caught that on a slide, but since his feet were more towards the sidelines, he wasn't able to get a foot down. And perhaps he was juggling it as well. As we look at the replay here, it'd be a good angle as to whether he made the catch. Yeah, it was a good catch, but it looked like his Very legs. Close. Yeah, his legs were out of bounds, it looked like. On the slide, both feet just on the out on the sideline. Huge stop for the Blue Jay defense keep this momentum going. Maroons to punt. Marvin Carr is back deep for Elmhurst. Carr should have a chance to return this one. From his own 13. And oh, a good open field tackle as Carr is brought down behind the 15 yard line. Mm. Boy, we're seeing some good football here, both sides of the field. Nice job by the Chicago Gunners on that. Looked like it was Ben Clark. Ben Clark, one, yeah. of them, one of the Maroons down there. A couple of Maroons down there to limit. They returned from Carr. Now, another chance for this Blue Jay offense to make another statement. Trailing by six. 14 minutes remaining in the game. Blue Jays going to start this drive from their own 14. Joe Camilleri, working out of the gun here. Camilleri, rolling to his right, and he's going to take it himself and dive forward to about the 18. He'll pick up four yards, second down, call it six for Elmhurst. Montefalco for the Maroons with a nice tackle there, just basically tripping up Camilleri, diving forward for a couple. Thirteen and a half minutes remaining in this one. Call it second down and seven. Camilleri has Josh Williams just to the right of him. Camilleri is going to run it and take it himself, and it looks like he slipped a little bit. Bullock was there to make sure he didn't go anywhere. 
Of course, it rained here all afternoon. That's right. Field possibly still slick from all that rain. Sure. They're going to spot it at the 15, just over the 15-yard line. Third down and nine. Be careful here. If you don't have anything, throw it away. Don't want to force anything. Still plenty of time left to get the ball back. Over 12 minutes to go in the game. Camilleri fakes. And now the pocket collapses and goes down goes Camilleri. Again, pressure on that play by the Maroon defensive line. There's Scott Minquist and all the rest of them coming in. Just really that whole defensive line. There's Bullock converging. Yeah. This, and really, I think that was good coverage also by the secondary. Camilleri saw his first read, didn't have, any, didn't have anybody to throw to, and so just had to tuck it in and just kind of hope that some, either somebody came open or some a running lane would open up. So now the Blue Jays to punt. Well, Toronto from his own 44 gets it across midfield to the 44 of Elmhurst. So Anthony Beltrano with yet another fine return. Gives the Maroons some really good field position. 12-yard return. You're, yeah, indeed, the Maroons are at the 44 of Elmhurst. Leading by six. 11.32 left to go in the game. Going back to that third down, when what you said, you really got to be smart with that play. And I think Camilleri was smart with he that play. He was smart, yeah. He didn't force the ball downfield, which could have ended up in an interception. Sure. It was a good decision. As much as it's tough to take the fourth down, it's a good decision by Joe Camilleri. Hey, your defense is playing well. Rely on your defense to make a stop. Patrick Ryan, the keeper. as he brings it to the 38. That's the first time we've seen that wrinkle in the right. offense. Picked up, picked up six. Andy Warson, sophomore out of Wyoming, Michigan, was there to make the tackle. I was already looking at the running back, but we haven't seen a rush really from Ryan. Only his fourth carry of the game. I formation this time, it's Ross Nash. He will get the first down as he gets brought down at the 32. Six yards on that pickup by Zach Ross Nash. Mm. And just wearing down that Blue Jay defense, pounding the ball straight ahead. The Maroons aren't, aren't going to, they're not going to fool you. They're not going to pull anything. No, there isn't any trickeration, or at least there hasn't been yet. It's you know, straight ahead football. They score here, obviously, a two-score uh, two difference. Maroons leading it by six right now. Ross Nash, again up the middle. Boy, he's getting some holes now as that offensive line up front starting to create holes for Zach. Able to reach the second level there, get past defensive line into the linebacking core. Finally brought down. Picked up nine. Second down and a yard from the 23. Ross Nash again. Uh, maybe on the second effort, he may have gotten it. One nice. yard pickup and indeed a first down. They're going to move the chains. Nice play by the by Elmer's Jake Pawlicki to Limit, it, limit the carry, but he was able to stretch for that first down. The clock continuing to move. 9.35 to go. And normally, with that much time, not much of a factor, but the way these drives have been so long, it's just, you know. The Maroons have sustained drives extremely well all game. Sure. It's Ross Nash again, and again, it's up the middle, and again. It's a big game. Close to the goal line is Ross Nash. And he's in. Touchdown. Wow. What a run. 21 yards 
by Zach Ross Nash. Straight up the middle, power football. And just an open lane for Ross Nash, takes advantage and then drags a couple defenders with him all the way to the end zone. Amazing run. And that makes it 22 to 10. And it's gonna be awful difficult now for Elmers. Gonna need a couple of scores here. 9.09 left to go and the Blue Jay, or I should say the Maroons now, uh, going for the two point conversion. Leading by 12. Surprised not to see Ross Nash in the game for this play. Patrick Ryan under center. Ryan throwing. And the diving effort after the catch by Sam Coleman. Did he get into the end zone? I believe there's a flag. Going to see what the call is. They may have, they may push him back. Although he, whether he got in is a big question, especially if it's on the Maroons, because right. obviously if he did not get in, the Blue Jays can just decline the penalty. Mike Cunningham, our referee. Does look like it's against the Maroons. Oh, wow. Offensive pass interference. So he did get in, so the Blue Jays will accept the penalty. Chris Mason with the offensive pass interference. Possibly they caught him on a pick play. That's the only that's the thing I would think. Well, the, the ball is all the way back to the 18. So now we'll see if the Maroons still want to do the two-point conversion or if they go for the extra point. Well, they're bringing the big tight end in, Brian Welsh. Yeah, they're still going to go for it. Brian's yeah. still in the game. Ryan looking here to the near side, looking, and he's got his man that's Massey, but he's not going to get in there, so the two-point conversion fails. It's still a 12-point lead, 22-10, to 10, in favor of the Maroons. I believe some of the big holes that the Maroons created on that drive could be a part of that first half in which the Blue Jay, spent, Blue Jay defense spent so much time on the field. Got a couple of replays here. First we'll get, this is gonna be the two point conversion attempt. Excuse me, this is gonna be the touchdown. Here's Ross Nash, big hole in the middle. And there's one broken tackle, two, now three Blue Jays on him and Ross Nash just wow. would not go down. What a run. Maybe a Marshawn Lynch type run there. Yeah. Another angle of it. Just straight ahead power football and Ross Nash is one of those one of those running backs that fits that system so well. And just as Josh Williams does for the Blue Jays. It's just very similar running style. Power ahead. Straight ahead football, straight in between the tackles. And if you're the Blue Jays now, you know, trailing by twelve. No need to panic right now. I mean, you know, there's still over nine minutes to go. Just play your game. And if it is a long, sustained drive, then so be it. That's right. There's no reason to change no. what you do at this point. Carr is going to bring it across the 20 to the 23-yard line. And that's where the Blue Jays will take over. 9.04 remaining in this one. 22 to 10 in favor of the Maroons. Elmhurst 1-1 one one coming into this game. The University of Chicago 2-0. University of Chicago defeating Beloit 28-6. And last week knocking off Concordia, shutting them out 38-0. The defense really showed up in both those games, giving up just a total of six points in their first two games. Yeah. Camilleri sending Claxon in motion. Give is to Williams. Josh trying to cut it outside, and he'll get to the 27. Gain three yards. It'll bring up third, uh, second down. Call it seven. I believe Manquist slowed him down there. And a couple of Maroons came in to clean it up. 
And the Blue Jays with all three of their timeouts remaining. Something else about it, in a battle of attrition such as this one, field position is so important. I believe, and the Maroons, I believe, have had the advantage in field position for most, for most of their drives, really. Second down and seven. Camilleri is going to keep it, and he'll dive to the 30-yard line, pick up three more, bring up third down and four. Let's take another look at it here. Not sure if this was a broken play or not, but no, it was a quarterback keeper. A designed option. Sure. Third down, really big third down and four here now. Very big third down. They don't get it. I'm just well, I'm wondering if they would go for it on fourth down. I wouldn't be surprised because it's two down territory. Let's hope we don't have to worry about it. They pick up the first down here. Huh? I'm right there with All you. All right. Third down, four. Camilleri, time throws. Oh, he had an open man. Mm. Incomplete. That was Spencer Frisbee. 5'10", junior, out of Vicksburg, Michigan. He was open, but, well, now we'll see what happens. Looks like uh, the punting unit coming out here. Seven minutes and 31 seconds to go in the game. Yeah, Frisbee broke free, as you could see on the replay, and Camilleri put the ball up high trying to let Frisbee go get it. It was just a little, led a little too far for him, and now... Blue Jays will be forced to punt and rely back on that defense once again. Beltrano is not going to get an opportunity to return this punt as it goes out of bounds and it's going to be spotted at the 43. 724 remaining in the game and of course if you're the University of Chicago you want to continue what you've been doing all night long and that's just grind it out, move the chains, run the clock down. The good news for them is that's what they do best. That's exactly right. They love to run between the tackles. Zach Ross Nash, a couple of very good runs on that last drive. Well, I can only assume that they're going to keep handing it off and let that big offensive line work against the Blue Jay defense. This is a good Maroon team. You mentioned they don't make a lot of mistakes, not a lot of penalties tonight, and they haven't turned the ball over yet tonight. Just one penalty for each team. I mean, yeah. Make that two, I suppose. Yeah, that uh, unsportsmanlike conduct there. That's right. It's Ross Nash. He gets to the 45. Two-yard pickup, second down and eight. As we approach the seven-minute mark. Let's see if the Blue Jay defense tries to gamble on one of these next two plays. See if they can get a loss, a sack, something, depending on... Obviously, what the Maroons try to do, but bring bring a couple extra guys. I agree. Someone needs to step up and make a big play. Trailing by 12. Second down eight. Ross Nash dives forward for about a yard as he gets to the 46. So it'll bring up third and seven. They did send a couple extra guys on that play. So linebacker blitzing from the far side. I believe the middle linebacker, Tucker, blitzed, blitzed as well. Well, this would be a big stop. Blue Jays trying to get the ball back. Third down and seven from the 46. But this is where Patrick Ryan has been so dangerous. Seven of 14 on third down. Here he comes. Looking here to the near side, throwing, and that one incomplete. John Gormley was the intended receiver. The Blue Jays hold. Maroons are going to send out their punting unit. Nick Spracklin made Ryan throw that possibly a little sooner than he wanted to. Great three and out by the Blue Jay defense, giving the offense the ball back as we look at the replay here. Spracklin was in the vicinity, but either way, throw a little short for... Ryan's intended receiver, and now the Blue Jays, maybe they probably could need a spark. I, I, I'd like to see a spark on this maybe, return. Maybe, yeah, I was going to say, maybe Marvin Carr could bring one back here. Standing at his own 12. Quick punt. 
Carr is just going to let this one bounce, and oh my, it's going to stop inside the five. What a nice punt. To the four. Mm. So the Blue Jays are going to start. Five minutes and 45 seconds to go in the game. First and 10 from their own four. Second time the Blue Jays have started. First down inside their own five. Another good punt, and again, really tough field position for the Blue Jays. Again, 5.45 remaining in the game. The Blue Jays still with all three of their timeouts remaining. Camilleri is going to work out of his own end zone as he hands the ball off to Williams. Has some room, some breathing room for Williams in the offensive unit. Got five yards out to the nine. Second down and five. Now, no huddle offense here for Elmhurst. Camilleri instructs Williams to come to the side of him. Camilleri steps up, throws, now gives, gives it off to Williams. And Williams goes forward to the 19. They'll have a first down. Oh, there is a flag. And that's generally in the area of offensive holding. Mm. Not a good time to pick up a holding penalty. That's a really tough penalty for the Blue Jays because it's just going to push them straight back inside their own five. Especially since they've pretty much played penalty free the whole game. That's right. This is their second penalty yeah. of the game. Mm. All right. Clock now at five minutes exactly. Blue Jays need two scores. Camilleri out of the pistol. He's from his own end zone throwing. Oh, in and out of the hands of Claxon. And that's one of those things where Garrett may have been looking ahead before he caught the ball. I think he was already looking for a linebacker because he knew there were a couple players in the vicinity. He's got to keep his eye on it, make that catch, and then deal with what exactly is ahead of him. But obviously, huge third down, excuse me, huge fourth down on this one. Pretty much the ball game at this point. 4.49 remaining. 22 to 10, University of Chicago. Make that third down, excuse me. Third and about nine. Camilleri under pressure, and he's just gonna have to get rid of it, and that one is picked off. Intercepted, it looked like there, by number 22, Nick Pilek, the junior linebacker. Let's take another look at it here. Penalty. Yeah, Pilek with the pick. The penalty was against the Blue Jays, and, of course, the Maroons are going to decline that. It's going to be Maroons' ball. Again, that Maroon defensive line showing their prowess and getting all up in the face of Joe Camilleri and looked like Camilleri was, was going down when he threw that pass and just trying to make a play for his offense and that time it ended up being intercepted as he forced that one over the middle of the field. Yeah, you can't really blame Joe on that one. I mean, you're just trying to make a play here. You're down by two scores with the time winding down. So now a great opportunity for the Maroons to put this one away in the red zone, out of the eye. It's Ross Nash. Boy, look at Ross Nash, and he is in once again, up the middle, touchdown once again for Ross Nash. Power eye formation once again. Second time tonight that Ross Nash scoring just straight up the middle. Earlier in the quarter, he ran from 21 yards out. It's now 28 to 10, and now the Maroons are going for the extra point. And 
And the extra point is good to make it 29 to 10. And uh, 435 remaining. Blue Jays going to need a miracle here. Boy, you, you look at the score, and th this game really is a lot closer than what that score indicates, Luke. Yeah, I, I would totally agree. I, although both teams just really battling in this attrition, as you can tell here on the replay, you could see the offensive line making a nice hole for Rosh Nash, who wasn't even touched on his way towards the end zone. Look at it again. They're going to run off to the right. Just a nice kick-out block there. By the Chicago number 67, Menevil. That was a, was a nice kick out block there. Pulling guard, they love to pull the guard, extra tight end on the right side, and just run it straight ahead. And that time it worked. For, that time it worked for the Maroons. It's been working a lot in this fourth quarter as Ross Nash now has two long touchdown runs. 4:35 remaining here in the game. Miller is back deep along with Marvin Carr, and it's going to be Carr from his own four. Carr gets tackled hard at the 17-yard line. Good special teams play by the Maroons. Yeah, the Maroons special teams has been extremely impressive tonight. All aspects of the game, offense, defense, special teams. Maroons are a good team this year. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. They're going to be a force to be reckoned with down the road. Now, assuming the score stays as is, they'll move to 3-0 and on the season. A couple of wins over a couple of spread teams and then a win over a solid Elmer's team here on the road. See if the Blue Jays can put together a nice drive here to the end of the game. A little over four minutes to go. Camilleri. As time now gets pressure and he goes down. Like Eddie Giannina, number 53 among others, was in on the sack. That's his third sack of the season and boy, they've just been relentless. And now they smell blood. <laughs> They're gonna come after Camilleri. Second down. 15, pass intended for Bowers, and that one is complete. It's gonna bring up third down and 10. Let's take another look at the pass. Quick hit to Bowers. Nice job by Bowers to get low enough to get his arms under that one. Cradle it. Third down and 10. Camilleri. Dump it off, and Williams will have enough for a first down as a nice check down by Camilleri. Hits Williams, and they'll have a first down. Stops the clock with 3.31 remaining in the game. I like that play call on the screen. It's actually, they're going to they're gonna roll the clock here. Don't know exactly why. Does it seem like he got out of bounds? Again, it's Williams here on the screen, and he'll get knocked out of bounds at the 37. Pickup of six. Clock stops. 317 remaining. I like the screenplay to Williams. Anytime he can get the ball in Josh Williams' hands, anything can happen. Yeah, I would have liked to have seen that a couple times in the first half. That's right. This one again complete to Bauer. Spins, gets across midfield. 45. Brought down at the 40 yard line of the Maroons. Tackled by Jackson Gary. And the, Mar the Blue Jays are moving it here nicely. That was a nice throw by Joe Camilleri into a tight space, as you saw there. A couple of defenders converging. Bowers moving with the ball, then get away from his initial defender and able to run downfield. Up movement. And was it C.J. Barnes, the offensive tackle? Looked like the left tackle, Barnes. Yeah. Oh, no, they're, they're calling it against the Maroons. All right, and they forced him to jump by jumping into the neutral zone. Okay. Blue Jays will take it. Five-yard penalty. Ball at the 35. Just under three minutes remaining. Camilleri 
Going for it all, deep into the corner and incomplete. Zach Campbell, sophomore out of Muskegon, Michigan, was the intended receiver. Bring up second down five. I like the decision to go for it, especially on a first down and five. Take your shot at the end zone, sure. see what you can get. Especially with that one-on-one -on -one matchup, you never know what could happen. See the trips to the top right-hand part of your screen. Second down and five from the 35. Camilleri throws, and that one is incomplete. Campbell, again, the uh, intended receiver, going to bring up third down. Well, at, at this point, I think you just need to pick up a first down, right? First things first, Luke. That's right. First things first, get the first down. Yeah. Even if the clock runs, that's okay. 2.43 remaining. Two wide receivers now on either side. Got to think the middle of the field could be open. Possibly Claxon in the slot. Look for him. Run something short over the middle. Third down and five. Camilleri has time. They screen it again to Williams. And let's see where they spot it as he's knocked out of bounds. Where? At the 30? It's going to be close. They yeah, may have to get a measurement. It's going to be right there at the 30. Well, I think they're going to think they're going to give him a first down. And, yep, they're saying move the change. Yep, there they go. Clock stops momentarily. 2.36 to go. So the Blue Jays putting together a nice drive here late. Pass incomplete. Claxon was the intended receiver. Bullock almost there with the pick. I wonder if he got a hand on that one. I couldn't see if it changed the spin on the ball. Maybe he did not. We'll check the replay. Yeah, he, he did. did get a hand he on sure it. Did. Yep. Yeah. That was a nice play by Bolock to get a hand on that and limit a completion. Bolock, he's played well tonight, as has this whole defensive line for the Maroons. Second down now from the 30. Pass complete to Claxon. Claxon dives and spins to the 15. 15 yard pickup and a Blue Jay first down. Another nice quick hit over the middle, as we see. Just a two-step drop from Camilleri, able to step into this throw across the middle. There's Claxton. And able to run a little bit after the catch as well, with the Maroons playing off the ball. 2.10 now left on the clock. Camilleri to the far side, and that one is incomplete. It'll bring up second down and 10. 2.06 remaining. And even if this is a three possession game and possibly out of reach, this is huge for the Blue Jay offense either way. Yes. Another red zone trip, another rep in the red zone, especially in a game situation. I mentioned earlier they'll be idle next week, so they got pretty much two full weeks to prepare for Augustana right here at Langhorst Field on October 4th. Camilleri with the blitz coming, and it is knocked down at the line of scrimmage. It looked like it was Skyler. Mana Falco, who knocked it down. The Maroons, as soon as I say the Maroons are playing off the ball, here they come with all the pressure. Mana Falco coming from the right side, or excuse me, Camilleri's left, just all over that pass. That's great camera work, guys. Nice job. Mana Falco with a big paw on it. Third and 10 now, Blue Jays. They need to get to the five pick up a first down, but obviously they want six. Just over two minutes. Camilleri steps up. He's going to run it. And he will get inside the five. He'll pick up a first down. First and goal, Blue Jays. Good decision by Camilleri and a nice run. Staying not afraid to take a hit. Here, we'll check it out. Camilleri running right up the gut. Breaks, breaks the tackle and then moves inside the five. First and goal from the four. Camilleri with all sorts of time. Claxon 
the intended receiver in the end zone, incomplete. And it looks like Greg Tome is shaking up a little bit as he is down in the end zone. Greg Tome, the junior free safety out of Valparaiso, Indiana. Injured. Of course, the preseason CCIW uh, predictions came out. Everybody, of course, favoring uh, North Central College to win the conference championship once again. I thought that would this will be the first time in a long time that the Blue Jays haven't opened their conference schedule with North Central. They've got the Cardinals the final game of the regular season here, November 15th. Tomei is up under his own power, walking off. Hopefully he will be okay. Second down and goal for the Cardinals as we resume play. 144 left to go in the game. Adam Bowers is split out far to the right. And what timeout taken by the University of Chicago Maroons. First timeout taken of the half by the Maroons. So we'll see what the Blue Jays call here on second and goal from the four. Of course, Wheaton College also going to be tough this year, as they always are. CCIW in general is just always an extremely tough conference. I mean, opening with Augustan, Augustan is always, always good. And then Illinois Wesleyan, obviously, usually nationally ranked North Central and Wheaton. Wheaton will be a new team without their quarterback. They had a, their senior quarterback, Jordan Williams, is now gone. He was just an absolute stud for them for a long time. Elmhurst, in the month of September, has traditionally fared pretty well. Over the past 12 seasons, the Blue Jays have gone 34 and 6 in the month of September. Very impressive stat there. <laughs> yeah, but unfortunately, it doesn't look like they're going to get a W here tonight. This September has been been tough, and they've played a couple of tough opponents. Loris is a completely new, completely new team. The Blue Jays had dominated that series, but Loris came out extremely strong in that game, and then. Good comeback win against Olivet to get the first one of the season for the Blue Jays last week. Second down and goal. Claxon, the motion man. And touchdown, wide open in the corner, Adam Bowers. Bowers, a 6-1 junior out of Metamora, gets the touchdown. Making it 29-16. And it looks like the Blue Jays are going to go for two. Or no, they're bringing in the extra point team. Yes, they will They will kick the extra point here. 139 remaining. Brett Bayer in to take it. Extra point by Bayer is good to make it 29 to 17. 139 remaining in the game. Well, just like we talked about, the Blue Jays put together a really nice drive. That's right, and even though it may not play into the decision of this game, just to get a nice drive with good offense rolling, able to complete a couple of good passes over the middle as we check out the touchdown throw. Camilleri had lots of time. It's a great job of the Elmhurst offensive line to give him plenty of time, lots of time for the routes to develop, and then eventually hitting Bowers as it was actually probably his third or even fourth read. I was just going to say, I, I liked how he looked all over the field. He just didn't focus in on one part. He looked to the left, nothing was there. He looked in the middle, and finally to the right, and he found Bowers. And obviously, great job by the offensive line yeah. to be able to give him that kind of time. It's, it's been tough on Camilleri because a lot of times it's been his first read is the one that he has to go to because the defensive line is converging in on him. But that time, great protection from the Blue Jay offensive line. And, Leads to a touchdown. Good crowd on hand here tonight at Langhorst Field, and they saw a good game. Well played game. They saw two good teams battle it out. 
Well played on both sides. Very few mistakes in this game. Yeah. Been very impressed with, with really both quarterbacks. We touched on it earlier. Joe Camilleri for Elmhurst and, of course, Patrick Ryan, the senior quarterback for the University of Chicago. Yeah, both senior quarterbacks really like we'll shown up well in this one. Try the onside kick attempt here. Bayer went 10 yards. Ball's loose. Oh, and the Maroons have covered up. It's at the 47-yard line, it looks like, of Elmhurst. And with 137, we'll see if the uh, the Blue Jays decide to take any of their two time. They have two timeouts remaining. Looked like Christopher Dengler was the one that ended up with it, but that one bounced dangerously. It was well kicked by Brett Bayer. Blue Jays were able to get in on it as we check out the replay here. You're going to see this bounce. This bounce is up. It gets by the first maroon, which basically means it's a free-for-all. Yeah. Uh, but Dengler is able to pounce on it. Here come the linebackers. The give is to Ross Nash. And he'll get to the 42-yard line, and they stop the clock. And indeed, the Blue Jays will take their second timeout. So they've got one left, 131 left to play in the game. Linebacker splits in from the middle, but Ross Nash bounced it outside, was able to gain five yards. Valdez honorable coming up from his safety position to make the play. So the Blue Jays will drop to one and two in their three non-conference games. And they'll have the CCIW for the remainder of the regular season. Meanwhile, the University of Chicago Maroons will improve to 3-0. Their conference is an interesting one. They don't necessarily play a lot of conference games because their conference is so spread out. A couple teams in New York, Rochester, I know, is in their conference. They do play Wash U, Carnegie Mellon, and Case Western Reserve, who are all in their conference, the UAA. Second down and five. Ross Nash straight up the middle, and he'll get brought down at the 40-yard line. Tackled on the play by Billy Vieiro. Another safety converging on the play. Good tackle by Vieira. Another timeout taken by Elmhurst. 126 remaining. It'll bring up third down and three after the timeout here for the Maroons. Certainly appreciate you logging on and tuning in to our Blue Jay football here. We've enjoyed bringing it to you. Mark Kruger along with Luke Tanaka and our entire crew. Well played game here tonight at Langhorst Field, but the Maroons are going to come away with the victory, leading 29-17 to with a little over a minute remaining in the game. Third down and call it three from the 40-yard line. Ross Nash again. And, oh, he's going to be close on that diving effort. Needed three yards. He needed to get to the 37. And that's exactly where the football is. Well, it's a little bit short of the 37. Looks like it might be a foot or two short. Yeah, now they're bringing it back to the 38, so it's going to be short. It'll be at least a yard short. Final timeout taken by the Blue Jays. 119. Remaining. It's got to be awful tough to, to have a loss going into a, a bye week. Yeah, you got to think about that loss for two straight <laughs> weeks. <laughs> Maybe it inspires them. And, and obviously, Augustana right here, Langhorse Field, October 4th. And that's going to be a very interesting game and a great gauge, I believe, for the Blue Jays in the conference. Yeah. Augustana usually around where the Blue Jays are, about fourth, fifth in the conference. But to see what, what Augustana brings, what Elmhurst brings on that day. 
going to give a gauge as to where both teams are in the CCIW. Traditionally, always one of the toughest conferences in the nation, the CCIW in Division Three. Fourth down here, less than a yard to go. Patrick Ryan and the Maroons just trying to run this one out on the keeper. Ryan will have the first down. And he'll just go down, and that'll, that'll do it. They'll pick up the first down. They'll move the chains. He'll take a knee. And the Maroons on that far sideline going crazy as they're going to improve to 3-0. They deserve to celebrate. They played well tonight. That was a nice play call as we look at the replay by on the run by Ryan. Just you know that Elmer's defense is going to converge on the straight ahead run on fourth and one and to run the bootleg. There's just nobody in the flat. And you can just hear the maroon coaching staff. Ryan, get down, get down, don't That's get injured. Right. That's <laughs> right. He had one heck of a game he did. Patrick Ryan. Decision making was impeccable. Ryan takes the knee. It'll do that one more time, and the clock will wind down. Final score here tonight is going to be 29-17. to 17. Maroons with the victory. And if you're the Blue Jays, you know, it's not like you played bad. No. I mean, you're going up against a pretty darn good team in these Maroons, and Blue Jays did some good things tonight. They put together some nice drives. Defense played fairly well. They didn't make many mistakes. No, I think, not a lot of penalties. I think extremely clean game from both sides. Yeah, and you know, the Maroons were just a little bit better at the line of scrimmage, and in, in a in a game such as this one, that that is the difference. So the Blue Jays will, as we mentioned, they will have two weeks to prepare for their next game, and it will be the conference opener right here at Langhorse Field against the Vikings of Augustana. That one will be played on October fourth. So the Maroons go to 3-0. The Blue Jays now 1-2. and two. That'll do it here from Langhorst Field. We thank you so much for tuning in. From our partner Luke Tanaka, Mark Kruger, and our entire production staff, our director Mark Radabow, our producer Jeannie Urick, and our entire crew. Again, your final score, University of Chicago 29, Elmhurst 17. Until next time, Mark Kruger. So long, everybody. I'm John Quigley, President and CEO of the Elmhurst Chamber of Commerce and Industry. In these challenging economic times, it's imperative that our residents and businesses band together to not only shop Elmhurst, but buy Elmhurst whenever possible. We have great stores in our city center, Spring Road, Butterfield Road, York and Vallette Streets, St. Charles and Route 83, North Avenue and Lake Street, along North York and even Grand Avenue. I ask for your help. Let's keep our tax dollars in Elmhurst.